to cinematography and filmmaking and photography. Mm. And I just started in that sense, like, hey, I got to start doing this. And then my interest took over. You know, my interest just took full control. It was like a Frankenstein experiment. Hey, guys. And yeah, that that's kind of the whole story. It's not, I don't have a big Batman background story, you know, like a lot of people are experiencers and I love my experiencers. I love them all. I think they're amazing. Um, but I have had strange experiences happen to me, but nothing where I could say like that I've seen a physical UFO right. or, or a craft like that. So I'm uh, the everyday average gaucho, basically. <laughs> well, we, we like the everyday average gaucho. So real quick, let's just say hello to Jeremy Reese, alien scientist in the, in the room. Welcome, my friend. Oh, you're, you're, you're muted. Nope, nothing. All right, all right. Well, while while uh, Jeremy's figuring it out, let's welcome Carl. <laughs> Which, hey, how's way, it going? Carl <laughs> Anderson and Jeremy <laughs> Reese. Man, I got you guys cool. confused all hell. Um, I thought Jeremy Reese was uh, was was uh, science is religion, and I thought science was religion was Carl Anderson. I I, I got you guys confused. So it's fun. It's fun that yeah. it's it's even better for me now that you're both in the stream. I'm sure not yeah. to get anyone confused. Um, so Carl, welcome, man. Thank you for being here. Um, can you tell uh, the people out there a little bit about your channel or 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 the things that you're doing uh, to to bring more uh, awareness to this topic? Um, basically, I really got into this back in, I'd say, 2017 with all the WikiLeaks and uh, the Tom DeLonge thing. And uh, I got on Twitter, and my biggest thing on Twitter, I've always thought, is to just to try to bring people together, like a unity. You know, um, I, I hate to say it, but sometimes you almost need a referee. Yeah. And you see things start to escalate, and I, I try to kind of bring them down a little bit, and, you know offer two yeah. sides you know as yeah as no that's i love and that's why you're here man you know because i love oh, yeah. that uh, that that perspective you bring and the level-headedness uh, that you could bring to this discussion you know because you're right i think uh, and i was talking to jeremy about this the other day when he was on the show it, you know the problem with twitter man it's a it does make the world a lot smaller smaller it makes us uh, able to communicate with each other across vast distances very very quickly but what tends to happen is we talk past each other we end up talking exactly. past each other a lot of things get lost in context especially when it comes to a 150 you know character tweet um it's 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 i think it's caused a lot of problems within this community because we talk past each other we don't listen to one another and all we're doing is is furiously texting our point as opposed to actually absorbing what in the cut that not only the context but what that person is trying to say um and i think a lot of times people just blow past that and immediately go right to their point maybe they don't even address the first thing that was brought up um so let's see if we got jeremy is your mic do we got your mic going can you hear me now we can hear you now sir welcome awesome. um so real quick jeremy if you can tell folks uh who you are what 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 your channel is and and uh and how excited you are but you know to be part of this this crazy day where we're all making phone calls and asking for more information. Thanks, Lewis. Yeah, your awesome job putting this together. By the way, this is uh, this is just what we what we needed. in ufology is a, a kind of a political action and a um, a rallying point where we can all get behind. I I kind of liken this to the. Uh, to the water truce of uh, the jungle book, you know, where all the animals in the forest come together at, at the watering hole and agree, yeah. you know, and I kind of feel like sheer Khan in some ways, you know, when I went showing up here at the conference, because <laughs> I, I am, a, I am sort of on the debunking side of a lot of this sometimes, but I'm yeah. only doing it for the, for the good of the community and uh, skeptics and debunkers are your friends. And we're, yeah. we're trying to bring this conversation to scientists and to you know professors and academics and mm -hmm. get the most serious people taking this more seriously because we're fighting against a 70 year you know disinformation campaign that was admitted to by you know by the by the US government they've they've essentially spread lies about this for for 70 years so we're fighting against that to try to gain credibility um, when they've ridiculed this subject and sort of try to ostracize it from science so i'm trying to merge that and bridge that gap um, between the scientific community mainly the physics community and the propul alternative propulsion community 
which seems to be there's some there there seems to be a lot of overlap uh, if you look through the history with Thomas Townsend Brown and some of these other individuals who are involved in in some of the um, alternative propulsion research they were also sort of connected to you know the UFO research because hey you know there's a curious kid inside of all of us that you know wants to believe that there's something more out there and there could be there could be you know invisible aliens flying around and there could be advanced science that we don't really know about yet in our in our textbooks and our in our universities and um, maybe we can um, maybe that if that just enlightens one person out there to start studying science and start going into the, this these fields then I feel like I've done my job and I and I've already over the years have gotten you know, people have, who've written to me saying, you know, hey, I went to school and, and decided to study engineering or physics because I saw your videos talking about alien technology and the possibilities for, you know, light craft and space travel and warp drives and all this real physics and real science that's sort of, it's there in the, um, it's there and it's, a lot of it's worked its way out in the last three years, which is really awesome. Um, so much has happened in the last, uh, in the last three years with um, the amount of information that's come out through uh, through these organizations and, and through the fight of all the people that are involved in this right now and fight and pushing for further disclosure because uh, we're not done yet and I have a feeling that even after this UAP task force report comes out we're still not going to be done and uh, the fight's gonna the fight's gonna sort of linger on for all of us uh, as far as we're, what, what <laughs> we're all in this for to try to find the truth I, I hope yeah. Um, well, I, 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 for a sec? Yes, please, please. Um, I was just going to say, without the the skeptics and the the scrutineers, we're just an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. We need that. We really do. We don't need total debunking. I mean, if something's fake, it's fake, right? But I just think that without the people looking hard at the hard data and just putting it through, putting the feet to the fire, we just turn into an echo echo chamber. So I think yeah. that's there's a place for all of that. It should I know, be there's been a, there's been a lot of positivity and, and, and brotherhood and everything here. And, and yeah. yeah, we're all animals in the jungle together. But if the, the predators don't take out the weak members of the herd, then the whole herd gets weak and uh, it, mm -hmm. it, everyone suffers. So, um, well, well, good thing we're not a herd of animals. <laughs> uh, I'm looking over my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can tell you this. I can tell you this, Jeremy. Honestly, man. Well, there's I quite think... a bit of herd. <laughs> I can tell you, Jeremy, I, I really, really, really enjoyed the analogy you just laid out. The, the watering hole in the jungle and, and you feel kind of like Khan joining people in the drink. Um, and I got to tell you, man, I, I love that positive outlook. I think that's a great way to look at it. We all got to, we're all thirsty. Okay. We all got to drink out of the same hole. And thankfully we're not a bunch of animals that have to remove the weak. We just say, all right, you can drink your water. And when you're ready, you I, can go back out into the forest. Fortunately, and die. <laughs> fortunately in this game, it's, we don't have the finality of death to like, and yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's not like, you know, the consequence is that you just learn a lesson and then you get better, right? Yeah, right? yeah. Just get better. Um, so real quick, <laughs> I just I just want to welcome um, Jay from Project Unity. We thought What's he up, wasn't going to be able to make it, Hi, and uh, and he's like, "Hey, man, you want me to come in?" I'm like, "Yeah, that would be great." That would be great. I've, 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 no, I'm so sorry I had to cancel off on you before. Don't it's been, it's been it, a crazy day, but I just, Don't. I literally just got back. I turned on the live stream. I was like, oh, they're still talking. I'm going to try and Good. jump in. So it's great to see you all. Dude, I'm so happy you were able to make it. So, Jay, real quick, if you can, just tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you do, and, and you maybe even what got you to this topic. Yeah, no worries. Um, so I've, I'm one of the younger guys. I've only been doing this seriously for probably about a year and a half, if that. Um, I got into this subject through a lot of strange synchronicities and coincidences that just kind of led me down this route. Uh, it did result in me uh, having my own contact in, in, some, in some way. I had my own experiences. And so that kind of solidified my ideas and my goals to you know, try and talk about this and articulate it. And I've been really fortunate in, in the way that I've been able to uh, luckily, network with some amazing people, have some amazing interviews, and uh, I'm just really happy to be here adding to the conversation you know um how is how you do you feel that the effort in the in the uk is going <laughs> well i mean it could definitely be going a bit better i mean the, you know yeah. the mainstream media response has been uh 
crickets pretty much you know there isn't much going on here and I'm, I'm hoping that discussions like this and and further discussions that we have can help push that forward but you know you've got the guys over at uap media um mm -hmm. in the uk which are you know doing amazing work and doing these fantastic articles and people like myself who are just trying to add to that conversation um but yeah i i, I have hope for the future when it comes to the uk response to this but we need to get on the ball especially our mainstream media because we're going to get left in the dust otherwise yeah, I, I can't Absolutely. I can't disagree there. Michael, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, here we are, uh, you know, our, our everything that we're all trying to do, whether it's in the UK or in Canada or here in the US is for the same reason, right? This is this is a global phenomena. This is not something that is specific to any region of the planet. Now, Brandon Fugel might argue with me on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's all happening here, baby. You know, there um, might be some hot spots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that being said, you know, like it, this is this is something that, and you you brought up this earlier, Luis, how it, how this is something that can actually unite people, right? It doesn't have to be something that that tears us apart. There's really no, I, I don't think any body, you know, from a political perspective, this is really a partisan issue. It is rather bizarre um, that right wing news outlets are more likely to report on it. But, you know, CNN starting to report on it and things like that as well. Um, but that being said, man, you know, I, I just appreciate everybody who's here today uh, and everybody who's listening because you guys are really what it's all about. Like, you know, we, we can all, I'm, like, I'm literally in my bedroom. Like, it looks like, it looks cool because, you know, it's, some, it's trickery, it's smoke and mirrors. At the end of the day, you know, we're all just here to, to get the message out, but it's up to the people who are listening who, to, to be motivated enough to get out there and ask your representatives to do what I, it takes I, to get the information. And uh, I'm I in just, my basement, but it's not my mom's basement. <laughs> 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 in case uh, you wonder of, what that window is up there <laughs> you just oh, you God. just you just you just threw this whole conversation right back into the dark ages <laughs> no, <I know. laughs> that's a chance you take sorry <laughs> oh yeah by the way <laughs> oh yes hell yeah dan Zetterstrom, man i love it yeah, yeah. i had the patch it down. I, I gotta figure out a better way to attach this thing um I don't so think gotcha. if, it, if it weren't for mom's Sorry basement, this off. field wouldn't exist. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I, yeah, totally, I said totally. the same thing like twelve times today, so I'm 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 ready to shut up. Wait, wait, Jer Jeremy, what did you say? I said I if it weren't it. for mom's basement, this field wouldn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> agreed. I totally agree, man. Um, uh, we'll go start out somewhere. I, I, I think it, it wouldn't, wouldn't shock me if the first conversation on this actually happened in in someone's mother's basement. So that's fun. Um, Gaucho, uh, my dude, how do you? How, I don't even know what question I'm going to ask. Um, this is our this is our seven going on. Um, but but uh, how how are you feeling about the day? Um, I know you live in Argentina. Um, so yes. it's a little different for you to get in touch with representatives there. Um, are you still able? I don't know. What's your citizenship? Can you still uh, contact yeah. uh, representatives in the states? I've got the list. I've got uh, an app to call, and I've been trying to call. I've been doing. The, I've been doing my part today. Yeah, and I've been it. watching. I've been watching you guys all day. And let me tell you, man, I am so happy about yeah. this. You, me too. Yeah. When you guys, when when this is done. Luis, I'm sure you're going to lay down. You're going to be like, oh, what a long day. And it's going to hit you, man. You yeah. have pulled something off with this. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I, can't, I can't do it without you guys. You know, this is all of ours. This is not just mine. This belongs but to everyone. You, amazing, man. Literally, I when I was hearing people tell you how good, you know, how good this was and you know, how happy they were to be all talking and this conversation was just happening. And it was something that I always say is like, we, we need to work together. And here's a good example of how, if we just sit down and we talk, mm -hmm. and we don't get crazy. <laughs> we can literally just have a conversation oh, about the phenomenon. Time, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I was getting like emotional when I was hearing people tell you like, oh, this is amazing. I was like, man, cause it is, it was amazing. You had Richard Dolan on, you had Jimmy Church on, you had Jeremy Corbell on, you had so many amazing, all of us, everybody, the whole community was here. And it, like, I respect everyone that came on tonight, everyone. And for me, this was like epic. It was like, I was telling my wife, it's like, uh, 
UFO Woodstock. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I yeah. loved what um, I, what uh, what Silva said. He called it the you know Super Bowl of UFOs or something. Like that. Okay, so I have a question for the I have a question for the panel, and I think this is important because Luis and I have been kicking this around. He said, you know, next year, you know, the, the hashtag is so long, the big phone home. But I wanted I want to ask you guys because I'm I'm actually I'm not going to tell you what I think. I want to know from you guys what you think about the the name and if we should keep it or change it. Change it. Keep it. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at you. Classic UFO community. Can't agree on one fucking thing. Just unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> um, you, you, well, I can tell you the reason why. I mean, the 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 one. I remember when and and this again. This was this this goes back to Sean Cahill. Um, when I when I. Get, when we were having discussions as far as uh, what what we're going to do to start, when we started first rolling the ball on the organization of this, um, I you know everybody's like uh, the big phone home. Why are you calling it that? I'm like because we're calling our house. We're calling our house of representatives, and it's it's a it's it's a fun tagline, you know. Like yeah, it, it, it tells people what to do within the name, right? And mm. and I remember Sean's face. He's like, "Yeah, I don't like it. it makes me think of ET." And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, oh, well, I got okay. that too, yeah. you know, like, okay, that makes sense, you know." So that's something we're gonna discuss come, you know, these next uh, eleven and uh, eleven months and thirty days we have uh, to to decide, you know, hey, do we want to change the name of this? Do we want to make this a little more? Uh, I know Gaucho hates the idea. I feel like I want to hear what know. Gaucho has to say. Yeah, what do you got? I, I want to say one thing. Yeah. Dude, the big phone home rocks. I'm I sorry. It, yeah, that's good. So, yeah. It doesn't matter I'm the sorry. name uh, that it you really call it. Doesn't. Mm -hmm. it. You know, it, what matters is that we, we're calling our senators with the, the yes. best information possible, yes. and we're, we're starting serious discussions on this. Yes. And maybe it's important to, like, uh, try to, like, build it around, you know, things that they care about, like budgetary finances. You know, like one of the things I, I mentioned in my um, – report is quantum gravity we should be we should be uh i mean quantum radar sorry not quantum gravity uh, that's also in my report but um quantum radar will tell us it uh, will show us invisible invisible objects so um i'm thinking that if, if we want to see these things and we know that there's invisibility technology we want to open up the skies quantum radar would be uh, a great thing to be looking at you know to be building and looking into because it would it would unlock um, invisible objects in the skies and there needs to be just more in general more um, eyes in the skies like the sky you mentioned Skynet earlier I think that's a good point a rally point for um, you know what can we do about it We're, we 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 talk about these problems you know the problem is a sol there's a solution and um, you know as long as the solution involves funding for somebody then uh, then it's going to get talked about and it's going to well, go places I, I love the idea of not taking skynet because that is very just the most terrifying thing to think of skynet from terminator but yeah uh, i think what he meant is skyhub but yeah. yes dude how cool <laughs> yeah. would how cool Sorry. would it be if you gave a skyhub to mit and, and somebody you know chimed in and said uh, let's get uh, let's get some of that <laughs> quantum radar on this thing, you know. <laughs> like, why not? I mean, uh, you know, those are the kind. That's like, dude, that's the inspiration we're looking for, you know. Like, I've never. Well, can you explain exactly what that means? Because I never heard that before. What is? Uh, did I get the name right? Quantum radar. Yeah. So they take a. It's it's like a normal radar system, but they they take a copy. They take a beam splitter and they take a copy of the photons. Um, so you have your photons here and you have the photons that you're sending out from your radar signal. And so if anyone spoofs you or um, ha is using invisibility technology, then then they'll, the photons that they send back will become entangled with another system. So they'll no longer be entangled with the photons that were split off the original beam so that you'd be able to tell that that it's uh, it's not it's using cloaking technology and be able to illuminate invisible objects. And the Chinese are working on this. They have a couple prototypes set up already because it's just military technology. It's it's counter to all the invisibility and stealth technology that the U.S. has been developing for the last uh, several decades. So it's just in response to that. And um, yeah, Skynet. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think I was trying not to laugh out loud while yeah. Jerry was talking. Yeah. Um,
Uh, so Luis, yeah, yes, but yeah, the quantum so radar this, is is one thing that we we should be looking into. We should be looking into a lot of you know technology and science are is our friend, and um, you know despite you know despite the, the we may have some enemies in the scientific community, um, but it, it, we're better off not fighting them and better off trying to just get better evidence and better ask better questions and. Um, that's kind of what I've tried to do. I put together my own UAP report. As you can see, I've been showing the slides from it behind me, mm -hmm. and I've plugged that. I have a bunch of documentation that I have to go along with this as well um, that it's posted in that video. On, there's a video on my channel called the UAP Task Force Briefing, and I'm going to put together another one um, about halfway through, and then I'll put one together once the, the um, official report comes out from the Senate Select Intelligence Committee. Um, updating some of the uh, some of the stuff that I've gone over in here and, and trying you know hopefully they come out with some new information but I basically you know outline what the the history was Roswell you know talk about Roswell there was all these you know people that reported this strange materials and these metals that were um, unbreakable and people talked about this I mean people people told their families this on their deathbed it's really you know yeah. I, I didn't make this up, <laughs> you know, this is on the internet already. And um, obviously the, the material would have gone to, you know, this blue room at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. That's where researchers have tracked it down to. And I, I included that in my report because, you know, the senator, imagine if we got a congressional FOIA and, and senators to start going after this stuff. That would that could possibly pull this out of whatever classification and obscurity and program that this is this is still hidden under seventy years later, if it exists. Yeah. And and um, you know, so I outlined stuff like that in the report, like uh, the Pentacle Memorandum, which was uncovered by uh, it was in Hynek's notes. I think Jack Vallee discovered it, and and um, it linked this guy Howard C. Cross as being like this head of this secret program, and it was run by a company called Battelle. Battelle Memorial Institute, and um, you know it's it's important that we we call our senators and tell them where to look, what to look for, you know what we're interested in. Give give specifics. So if, if people are looking for you know a, a talking point or something to go and you know a, a door to bark down, Battelle is a, is a great one. They they manage all of our national laboratories, so all our science institutions are pretty much run by Battelle, the the same parent company, which is. You know, in no way connected to the Men in Black. Yeah, well, um, I love the, I love the you know when you call Congress, they point to them the facts. And so that's that's I think that's a wise piece of information. But I, I heard my name before Jeremy started talking. Does somebody have a yeah. question? Yeah, Carl, what do you got? I'm just gonna say that you got to know that uh, you know uh, people in high up in government are probably watching us. Some definitely are. what they what they've seen really for the last what seven hours. Mm -hmm. Is unity? They Seven have and seen a half unity. Hours, actually, Carl. Well, they probably really, yeah. <laughs> and for we'll get you a whole case of SEPA call. <laughs> 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 but anyways, what they've seen is, uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of them probably thought, well, they're going to be on there ripping each other apart, but it was nothing like that. I've been on and off all day, and I've seen nothing but just positivity. Eh? And I think we'll get so far being like that. Rather than you know, torches and pitchforks, we're just right. this is right. the way. This is the way. This Let's the remember way. that, guys. When we go it, back on Twitter tomorrow, yeah, <laughs> remember this. No, yeah, hey. this to Twitter, please. Hey, it's yeah. aliens, and if it isn't, uh, John, John, <laughs> say that one more time. Say that one. Let's, I think that's important. Let's remember this unity that we've seen over these last eight hours, and that we can have yeah. a discussion, and then this can be healthy when we go back yeah. on Twitter. That's. I mean, I always do that. I, you'll yeah. never see me really fighting with anybody on. Twitter. No, you're you're, you're a pretty good boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But every, I mean, I got, everyone. I'm saying I could get crazy. Trust me, I could get crazy. <laughs> I don't, every, everyone's I, I got an idea to. on you know what they want it to be. Everyone, I want it to be aliens. That's my bias. Yeah. I don't know what it's gonna be, yeah. but it, it doesn't really matter. Like you know when the Jeremy uh, Corbell dropped his pyramid video right away there was an answer with and we all know it a whole bunch of drone hits and that's fine that's no problem at all but i'll come back with a rebuttal to that but i won't insult him right because oh 
Oh, oh, the, oh, the, I was just laying some wisdom. Oh, oh, hey, I think Jim, don't reach out. What, about, about, what, about, project, what about Project Whoops. Unity? What do you want it to be? Sorry, Carl, you get oh. your, your audio cut out. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think we, we thank you. I think that's a beautiful point. Yeah. Um, um, Jay, what do you think? Well, in terms of what I want, I don't know what I particularly want it to be, but I, I do have a feeling that it's probably um, it's, it's probably a spectrum of phenomena, in all honesty. I, I, I do think that we're dealing with a wide spectrum, and, and I, I do think that there's most likely a, a physical extraterrestrial component, but um, perhaps something a, a little stranger. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're talking about things like Skinwalker Ranch and uh, the, the immaterial, uh, like incorporeal side of this that seems to be... Uh, non-physical yet intelligent and interactable it seems very strange to me so i i just think that there's probably a wide spectrum of phenomena going on here which may play into the reasons why it's been shoved to the side for a long time because it's a very awkward discussion and um i i just think that at the end of the day like you guys were saying uh, it's a, it's about unity i mean it's in my name isn't it project unity <laughs> yeah. but I, True, I do, yeah i do believe in like a symbiosis between kind of like the, the the scientific side of this and the spiritual side of this because i've come from a certain avenue of learning through this that i've i've tried my best to to marry the components of nuts and bolts and like the consciousness aspect of this because i do think that these are two very important discussions but um no, I just think that um, we we all want to have answers, and like we were saying about you know people getting aggressive on on Twitter, and and maybe we can try and avoid that because even if we all have different ideas about this, whether it's nuts and bolts, whether it's extraterrestrials or extra dimensionals or whatever we want to call it, we want answers. Every single one of us wants answers, and I think that we you know we deserve to know. Absolutely, that That's question really woke the chat up. My God, it really uh, did. It really did. Yeah, I, I bet it did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's one thing to want answers. The question is, is, is what are we going to call our senators and what kind of answers can we expect to get reasonably get yeah, out of real. our senators? Yeah, you know, they're not, they're not our, um, spiritual <clears throat> guides. They're not our, no. our scientists, you know, <laughs> they're our servants. Yeah. So we, yeah. we are the government. Public. Um, we're, we're engaging in politics right now and being part of our government by, um, having this conversation and getting together yeah. and, and heads together on this. And um, yeah, that's my whole piece is just when I when I go and approach my senator I'm, and I call up, I'm going to ask them about these UFO artifacts. I'm going to ask them about the C the one that's depicted in CIA documents uh, um, concerning the 1952 Denmark case um, where a UFO dropped a piece of metal. There's a recovery of it and a, a chain of custody going back to the U.S. military. I want to know where those metals went and what programs that they were involved in. And I, you know. <laughs> want to know why it's been classified since 1952 it's a fair and, question and, and you know, this is why this is where i find value in you jeremy um so hold on to that thought for a second because we have to start closing this panel so i'm going to start yeah. with carl um carl uh if you can close this panel with some words of wisdom and 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 how you'd like to end this event for yourself sir um <clears throat> my, like i said all along it's basically just uh <laughs> unity and um you know, I encourage everyone to. Mm. Oh, they keep doing that to him. That's He's going to send right. something respectable. And, uh, you know, I send a lot. You know, it's hard to get a response, but keep trying. And uh, it shows interest. It shows that you're serious and you're not some kind of a crackpot that's, you know, just venting, right? Just just uh, keep keep up the push. That's all. For sure. Well, Carl, um. I'd love to have you come back on the show. Let's have a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe two-on-one -on -one discussion. Uh, we we have panels here all the time. I, I I really liked meeting you. I like putting a face with a name. And next time, let's meet mom. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. We'll talk to you soon. All right, so Jay, I'm going to you next. Um, same same thing. How how would you like to you know and and this panel and 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 words of wisdom for people listening. Well, it's it's one thirty six in the morning here, so I don't know what the words of wisdom are going to be that I bring out of my head right now. Um, but I'm one. I'm I'm sorry for being so late, but I'm very happy to be in here. And um, I would just say again, really, I'll just echo what we've just been saying that we should all we should all try and be a bit nicer to each other um, online, and you know, remember that we are even if we have different aspects of this that we're interested in, different answers that we're seeking. Ultimately, we're all just trying to get more clarity, more transparency on this, and we need to assist. Each each other in that effort and so i think things like this are amazing and i want to be a part of more of them contribute to more of them 
And uh, yeah, well done to you as well, Louise, for pulling this off, man, because this is, uh, you know, you, I know you were saying it's a group effort and it is, but you've pulled this off, really. You've pulled the strings and kind of got the networking on this uh, down. So yeah, hats off to you, man. Hats off hey, to man, you. Hey, man, I appreciate it. I, uh, I look forward to speaking to you in the future and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Sweet. Jay. I'm going to go to sleep now. Yeah, <laughs> later, right, do it. Good to meet you. Uh, so, so Gaucho, um, I know you popped in early. Uh, do you want to stick around for the next hour? Because you're scheduled for the last hour. I, I will stick around. I, okay, I literally jumped in thinking I'm going to just wait, you know, until I have to get yeah. on and then I appeared, but I'm happy okay. to be here. Of course. Perfect. Um, okay. So Jeremy, I wanted to give you the final, uh, word to close the panel. I remember when we had our show the other day, you and I, when we closed the show, we took off our microphones and we said to each other, man, that felt really good. That felt really good to end on that on that positive note that we did uh, on that day. Um, lay it on me again, dude. Give me something that's going to make you feel good and make the people feel good when when you hang up with us right now. Um, all right. And yeah. I, I just want to give my research, which is like, you know, I, I've been doing this for 16 years uh, with a scientific background, and I'm trying to just – I'm. My, my goal is to get more scientific credibility for this field and to get more scientists to start taking us seriously. And uh, so I've accumulated, you know, a, probably a curriculum. I could teach a whole, you know, fresh class with all the, uh, the stuff that I, I've dug into on invisibility cloaks, um, bending light, you know, visibility theory idea, you know, the research that goes back to the, the Philadelphia experiment and uh, rumors about anti-radar experiments at the Naval shipyard there. Um, you know, I, I mean, this is, if you want to get it, you want me to just give my presentation, like parts of my presentation, just to run through the technical part of it. Cause this is like, this is the important stuff. Yeah. Um, um, but, well, I did. Unfortunately, just the, the, we've, we can't. We don't have the time. Yeah. We're running up yeah, against so the clock. People can go check that out, and and there's there's plenty more to dig into here. I feel like yeah. disclosure, e even even without the government's help and without the Senate Select Intelligence Committee in this report, there's tons and tons of just educational information out there. There's enough, you know, this real physics and real science that um, people aren't looking into. This we have we have a whole alternative propulsion engineering conference where we we're basically inviting all these scientists who worked on these programs um, who are now you know retired and these these programs are now unclassified or declassified and we invite them on and, and try to bring um, you know Is your presentation on your YouTube channel Jeremy yeah it's on the alien scientist YouTube channel and you can find that um, UAP briefing uh, full and I have a document full of folders with all these uh, papers and even more deep um, papers and research on this and then I have a whole I have a whole nother archive of uh, of data I mean we have a huge data but we have one of the largest databases on you know anti-gravity physics papers anti-gravity technology any any kind of experimental videos or setups we have just everything saved in a one massive archive because we have like a whole community of people that are um, that we've collected that are now becoming super interested in this and um, you know that was part thanks to TTSA even though I've been a huge critic of them over the years uh, I would you know uh, Peter Diamandis of the X Prize said that you know the best uh, the best way to get people to succeed in things is with competition mm -hmm. and I think if I didn't view this as a competition I wouldn't have tried so hard because when I saw that they were coming out with a, a plan to commercialize, you know, the, this technologies for spacecraft and they wanted to, you know, TTSA was going to build a spaceship. I was like, oh, man, I, I like I want I, I'm like, this is my what I've been researching and working for for so long. I, I it motivated me to, you know, start this company called Hover Brothers with another physicist that I started and that fell apart. And then we started this Falcon space thing. And then. Um, I'm linking up with all these other labs and, and then we started this APEC conference to bring all these you know people together to present and get the the technical information out there and start and this is a starting point now that we've built on altpropulsion.com and American antigravity.com um, we built this community around this with this um, you know idea in mind that we have a starting point now that we can go to physicists from universities and say hey you know, there's some meat and potatoes here that you you're not looking into. You're not you're not really taking a, a consideration into consideration. And when you look at um, 
Fermi Labs just did a video three days ago, which I did a video response to, where they had a video on anti gravity and they totally trashed the UFO community. And these are the, and it gives you an idea of what the top physicists and scientists in the world think of us and how they view us and the information that we're providing them. So yeah. it, it gave me an opportunity to say, like, well, oh, let's up our game because I've obviously researched this topic more than this guy has. He put together a nine minute video. I've been researching this for you know, 16 years and I have hours and hours of, you know, <laughs> well, and I, I know that for sure. And that's why we're going to have you back and, and we're going to give you a, a, a better chance to really dive into that research and data. But I wanted to thank you, man. Um, no, and, people can go and find that, but I, I'm just here to, I'm really here to just say that we need to put our best foot forward. We need to um, establish credibility within the scientific community and get um, the next generation of scientists, you know, thinking about spacecraft and anti-gravity. Because the anti-gravity spaceships of the future and the Jetsons are going to be built by the people that believe in it, not by the right. people that debunk it and, and try to pretend it doesn't exist. Dude, so. beautiful point, man. That's a wonderful way to end this. And and I'm happy you came by. I'm happy you got to uh, share this moment with us. And uh, I'll see you soon, my dude. Definitely. All right. All right Joe? It's Either. young, smart people going, okay, how about this? How about that? How about this? Man, this is, this is what I thought was powerful. And there's going to be a lot more of that because, and there's a lot of issues out there and a lot of reasons to hold a stream yard. Mm -hmm. But is there a bigger issue in the world today than this one? I mean, people will make arguments. I would ask you, I would rebut that with, is there a more un unifying issue? Than this is there a better unifying issue great, than great, this great than this topic and i think that's the most important thing is that this unifies people because again this is a bipartisan issue it's an issue that every single person is interested in i don't care how you lean politically so for me this is a unifying issue i think this could get the ball rolling on a, a multitude of other you know very real world issues that this problem is facing michael what do you got I, I, I quickly, and I, I want to get to everybody in the panel, but but quickly, Stephen, I, I have a question for you. Um, when it comes to exopolitics, when it comes to um, you know understanding what politics will be like, uh, if and when there were a disclosure moment, or if and when there was there was proof of this phenomenon being something beyond um, you know conspiratorial, what do you what what sort of infrastructure, what sort of systems, what, what kind of things do people need to be doing, or what needs to be in place in order for us to uh, ensure that the people's voices are heard uh, in this topic and it's not a you know a purely top-down uh, just sure. do what you're told and shut up like what, what, what's that for you well first of all I mean no disrespect but the extraterrestrial presence has been proven it is proven beyond any reasonable doubt not once but two or three times over uh, so I just want to make that real clear and you may say well what wait a minute if that's true why why isn't it like just all part of everything we do because the government spent 75 years making sure that it would be difficult to say those words and difficult to act on those words. And that's the truth embargo. And that's something that hasn't been talked about too much tonight, but that's great. That means it's more for me. Uh, <laughs> and so, and then to answer the rest of your question, look, uh, by the way, I have to. We have. I can't stay here too long because they're going to run yeah. me off the White House lawn here. <laughs> uh, I snuck on and I got, that, I got a little, little, got a little camera. Little, you know, it's pretty cool. But at some point, yeah. one of the guys Secret, on the roof Secret is going to go. Yeah. yeah. What the hell is going on down there? Um, uh, so, look. You all are trying to get people to encourage members of Congress to go through with hearings. Excellent. Uh, you're using all the techniques that have been used for a while. Excellent. Uh, but let me be clear, where this is all going is back there, okay? That's where this has to end up. That is where disclosure will come from. Now, I say, I say that because that's what I define it as, so it's, it's a tautology. But disclosure as defined in the advocacy movement is the President of the United States getting in front of a camera and telling us there's extraterrestrials here, however well they want to say it. That's disclosure capital D. Nothing else is that. Small d disclosure, all kinds of possibilities there, but disclosure that we're seeking for, the confirmation, the, mo the bridge to the next world, that has to come from there. Okay, but the way to there is, is on my other wall, which is an eight by 12 mural of the Capitol building. Yes. Uh, taken when there wasn't an insurrection going on, so it's very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's what we need to get to. And, why, and, and going through the hearings is not just a matter of, okay, we need some information, 
right? Because that's not, the hearings are, are let me tell you, the hearings are about much more than information, I can assure you. It's just that with, there are seven committees that are the key committees that will be involved initially. There's 51 committees, standing committees, I think 50, 51. There's 171 subcommittees. Did I miss a committee, Stephen? Well, if you, if you if, <laughs> I missed, damn it. No, it's okay, it's okay. But, but, but uh, this is important because yeah, yeah. Um, um, the subcommittees are not going to be in play initially. The issue is too mm -hmm. big, too important. Mm -hmm. They're not going to give it to some subcommittee. It'll be when the main committees, there are seven, the House and Senate Intelligence Committee, the House and, and Senate Armed Services Committee, the House and Senate Homeland Security Committee, and the um, House Science, Technology, and Space Committee. Those are the seven committees, and the two most important and the most prominent will be the House and Senate Intelligence Committee. Now, there are 540 voting or not or, or, or delegate members of the uh, of the House and Senate. A significant portion of them are on one on one or more of those seven committees. So you peep, the people that want to jump into this need to focus on those committee members. No disrespect to everybody else, mm -hmm. but that is who you need to reinforce and say, I like what you're doing, I like what you're thinking. Make it as safe as you can and comfortable for them to make this maneuver. Now, I believe a lot's already been set up and in place. I think they're relatively ready to do it, waiting for the opportunity. But believe me, all the encouragement they can get, we will take, all right? And so those committees are going to hold the hearings for military witnesses that are going to be watched by hundreds of millions of people around the world. I assure you, when, when it's announced that those hearings are taking place, a lot of people <laughs> are going to make that appointment television, okay? Yeah. I can assure you. Definitely. Right. And so what you have there is the, a huge portion of the world's population, very large number of, 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 our, of our members of Congress, the press, right, okay, and military witnesses, all participating in essentially the final process. You see? So, so democratic. Everyone's involved. You talk about bringing people together. The yeah. military, the public, and the politicians on both sides are going to come together over those hearings, and there really isn't a hyper-partisan aspect of it initially. Now, once disclosure takes place, and we go into the post-disclosure world, and every other issue potentially connected to the ET issue will be in play, that's when they're going to start forming it out to the other committees, subcommittee yeah. here, subcommittee there. I mean, because it's, it's going to blow like up. a billion things, right? But the, but the lead up to disclosure, that is why this is so important. Any, any help that anybody can do to ensure that the members of Congress are not dissuaded or change their mind. They're going to go and have these hearings. They're going to bring these military witnesses in. Luis Elizondo is going to be leading the, the pack, I think. Mellon is going to be ma making the negotiations. If either of those gentlemen feel that I'm wrong about that, they can call me and I'll, I'll correct my statements as appropriate. But looks to me like this way it's going down. And so we're very close, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I would encourage you to have more of these. Oh, we will. Comments together. They don't have to be. It doesn't have to be a political activist thing. Mm -hmm. let, let, let's have these kind of group discussions where everybody's invited to come in and talk about what it would mean if we got the announcement, how what how they feel about the lead up to it, and of course the endless discussion on. What are you going to do in the post-disclosure world? What are your plans? Right. <laughs> anyway, I'm, right. I'm done. I'm, I'm, no, I'm no, 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 no. It's okay, Stephen. Look, man, you are you are a ball of wisdom, and I think everybody in here is just it, like anybody when they listen to you. They're just like, God, don't stop. Um, I I agree with you. <laughs> I I agree with you on a lot of the things you said. Um, so deep. I wanted to get your uh your thoughts because you're you're a very interesting mind. I think. Uh, probably the highest IQ in the room, safe to say right now, you know, so I always love, uh, oh, look at Stevens. He's like, who the hell is this? I agree. Um, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> All right. I've read his stuff. I've read no, his stuff. He's, he's a brilliant, brilliant man. So I wanted to get your tape, man. This is the first time we've ever talked. And by the way, we're going to have you back because again, I keep saying this, I'd love to have a long form discussion with you, but you know, this, this event was just, uh, it was so much to plan and I didn't get a lot of time to squeeze these people in before the event, but definitely after my friend, you got to come back. Uh, but just please sh share your thoughts. So um, first of all, the, the perspective that I wanted to share 
was from consider how much media attention the muon experiments at CERN got. That happened at three to 4.2 sigmas, right? And at 4.2 sigma, you have results that tend to fade away. But the very idea that there is only, greater than 99% chance that there has been new physics discovered capture the imagination and the attention of every scientist and engineer and their grandma. That was just from a 4.2 sigma result. When you look at the uh, UAPs and the incidents that we're dealing with here, um, I firmly believe that given the right amount of data, we'll be able to build a similar statistical um, uh, argument as to why there is new physics that goes well beyond four sigma confidence, right? Mm. Plus six sigma, 99.999% confidence. Mm. And so when we take that approach and argument, I believe that there is a way to get all these physicists, the top minds in the world, to properly look at this. They'll get more excited than they will get from the CERN experiments. So that's just the way that I wanted to, you know, frame this. That's a hell of an introduction, man. I yeah. love it. I mean, this is like this is why I gotta have you back, cause man, Mike, I can't wait. You know what? <laughs> if you can't make this work on your end, let's invite deep, and you we could do this on my channel, and and, and let's really. I love to deep. talk to both of you. I'm guys down. Anytime. Let's get I'm deep with deep. Down. Um, By the way, let's... Steve, I just want to say one thing, Steve. Yeah. Your work has been inspiring from the get go. Uh, yeah. The younger generations will will know your name. So I think that I know that's not about your ego, but thank you for all the work that you've done, and really for all of you too. Man. I 